All right, everybody, welcome to the Talent Insights Podcast, special edition, Hire World's Data Insights, Hiring Trends for Q1 2023, which of course is really Q4 2022, since we're talking about data from the past, brought to you by HireWell and SourceWell. Uh, I'd like to thank my co-host for joining me once again, my sidekick. Should I, should I start calling you that as your official title? Sure. Um, <laughs> HireWell CEO, Matt Masucci. Hi, James. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah, we're a little late on putting this one together, but I think it actually worked out better in some ways because I, I think having some of the January data actually right. put a little more context around what's happening. Um, a little bit late because honestly, we kind of forgot. Um, we were having so much fun in January that you know, yeah. time flies. But uh, it's it's been it's been a moment, I guess, for everyone in the recruiting industry. The last you know two quarters have been not what we are all hoping for. Um, but I think we can go down the data. Not all of it's good. And you know, we'll be very upfront about where we're, where we're doing well, where we're not. But I do think that the kind of the turn that we've seen in January has definitely put some, some sunshines on the horizon potentially um, compared to where we could have been had things kind of stayed the way they were. So um, Matt, I'll let you kick this off though. Um, I know we got about four or five things you want to kind of cover in this one, but uh, why don't you take the first crack here? Yeah. Yeah. You know, as we talked a couple months back, hiring, you know, officially peaked in, in Q2 of 2022. I think we all sort of felt it shortly after the fact, but it became more and more clear as time went on. And, and you know, and I think the the challenge is as the year went on, like our business and hiring in general tends to be, you know, slow in Q4. Now, it, it, the prior year it wasn't, it was actually a, quite a busy one, so it wasn't really sure to expect. But I think, you know, those of us at HireWell had a, you know, a, a bad feeling that Q4 was going to be a slowdown, you know, projects were ending. It was just really, really easy, you know, layoffs were, were, were ramping up and it was really, really easy for companies just to punt things into January or Q1 or whatever. And so we saw it and, and sure enough, that's what the, the number showed. Um, so like our hiring volume that we saw in Q4, it dropped about 17% from Q3. Um, again, not that shocking of a, a quarter over quarter uh, drop because you know Q3 is traditionally a busy one. Um, you know, but then when you look at year over year, Q4 did drop a little bit under five percent from 2021. So you know, it wasn't a massive drop year over year, but we haven't seen a, a we hadn't seen an annual drop in, in in several years. So you know, it was unex it was not unexpected, but you know, still you know, kind of pretty painful for anybody going through it, whether you were hiring, whether you were in recruiting, or you're looking for a job. You know, it's just a, Kind of a, a slow time. Yeah. And then um, I, the next thing I kind of think we want to discuss here going through it is um, we always talk about these shows, HR hiring, recruiter hiring specifically, and hiring kind of tech hiring software engineers. Um, recruiter hires, I mean, they drop pretty significantly from the first half of the year to the second half of the year. The second half of the year, honestly, was like a quarter of what it was the first half. So it just kind of fell off a cliff, almost to the point where like pulling data on average salaries, like it's kind of irrelevant because the sample size shrank so much that you can't really make any good like determinations out of it. Um, and that being said, the, the positions that, you know, HR volume while it did dip overall, we did see more HR strategy and leadership roles because I think that companies still had a push to, when they had major initiatives going on, they still utilized us and they still made those moves for kind of the key people setting the strategy. They just didn't need as many, you know, um, lower level, mid-level people kind of executing on things, whether it was HR or kind of talent acquisition, which isn't totally expected. So um, not what people in our industry working internally, wanted to hear, wanted to experience, wanted to go through, but just the reality of kind of where things were in the second half of last year. Yeah. Yeah. The booming boom in, in, in hiring recruiters, you know, again, we saw that was just absolutely insane for, you know, for 2021, you know, kind of first probably four months of, of 2022, and then it just, it, it fell off a cliff. And it's, you know, it, it's, it's disappointing. It's frustrating to see, unfortunately, it was also not unexpected. And, and you know, it'll, it will come back at just, you know, but I think the industry is going to continue to change, right? Like the, how far it's swung from 2019 to, you know, pretty much every year there's been a, like some sort of a major switch in the market. 2019 was busy, 2020, 2020 fell off a cliff, 2021 was a boom and 2022 it fell off a cliff again. And so, you know, you and Jeff have ranted about it at length. So we don't need to go on, you know, in <laughs> detail, but you know, hiring and firing recruiters is not the answer. That's that's the only thing I know for sure. And, uh, you know, we're working on solutions and plans to kind of get to a better spot. But, you know, just kind of crazy market. I was just going to say, I, I do think it's weird. I was, I was talking about this on LinkedIn a little bit today. Like, 
you and I have been in this industry long enough to see like how the pendulum swings for recruiters, you know, and it's a very volatile profession, which people don't realize because it happens in, you know, five or years between. But the fact that we saw a boom, a drop, a boom, a drop, all like, you know, kind of four swings inside of like three years is just like bonkers, you know, like usually that's what happens over 10 years, not over three. So anyway. Yeah, no, but you know, that's a, a kind of a good segue into the next thing. You know, we always talk about, I think, you know, HR slash recruiting and then software engineering are two great barometers for the market. It's, you know, two of our biggest areas and it also kind of really speaks to what's happening in the world. And, you know, for those who may not know, you know, Hardwell has placed software engineers for, for you know, 20 plus years. Um, you know, on, on average, we place, you know, four to 500 of, of them a year. So some big numbers, you know, not to say that we, you know, own the market, but I think, you know, the, the, the size and scope we do, we have some pretty meaningful trends there. Um, you know, again, the interesting, the peak for, for software engineers in, in 2022 was Q1. Um, you know, that Q4 was, was, was fairly busy, you know, it, but it did drop 25% from that peak. But again, it was steady sort of decrease as the year went on. So, you know, Q2 to Q3 to Q4 kind of dipped, you know, maybe five ish percent per quarter. So not, you know, not huge drops. Um, and, you know, and then interestingly, so, you know, the salaries for software engineers, like they, they did peak in, you know, Q1, our average salary for software engineering place was 139,000. Um, in Q2, that peaked at 150,000. It actually dropped back down to 139,000 for the last two quarters. So it, it's kind of crazy. The same exact number for three out of four quarters in the uh, year. And, you know, again, like that's, it's, I don't, you know, that's, it's going to just, it's going to be steady, I think. Yeah. I think uh, the only difference I think with this is that there's, uh, and this might kind of lead us into kind of the next topic I want to talk about the January jobs report, which is something I want to hit on is just that it's when I, when I do talk to companies out there hiring, they would ask me what's happening in the tech market. And is it, I had a conversation say, is it easier to find people now? I'm like, no, not really. You're just, you're just not competing against Amazon and Facebook and all these places that would throw like these crazy comp packages at people. So we talk about kind of the salary numbers, but there's a difference between a software engineer making 139K, but getting like you know half a million dollar in you know, equity versus because they're getting that from one of the big tech firms versus not. But anyways, um, January jobs report, everyone's probably, everyone's seen this by now, but you know, we're down to 3.4% unemployment, which is the lowest since 1969. There were 517,000 jobs added in January, which was, I forgot, the, the expect expectation was like 200K, something like that, something like nuts. Yeah. So a lot of people really hate this number because they think it's misleading. I'm not really sure that it is because um, there's, you know, obviously when we're in a bubble, you and I and everyone else probably listening to this, we're office dorks, as I call us. Like we we are wrapped up in tech circles. We work in very kind of office, white collar industries, software engineers, marketers, salespeople, HR, operations, f &A, you know, that type of thing. But we're a small part of the economy. And, you know, big tech is only in technology as a sector is only 3% of the economy. But breaking down that number, um, hospitality jobs, 128,000 jobs um, in January, the, the monthly average last year was 89,000. So that, yes, that was higher, that exceeded. But even if you look at everything that was like professional business services, it was 82,000 jobs. That's where all of our circles would kind of, you know, kind of fall into. The average for last year on a monthly basis, 63,000. So still almost 20,000 more jobs added compared to the average from 2022. So I think it's important to realize that, um, these jobs are still being added. They're just not happening within companies themselves that are in the tech industry. If you ask me, like, who's actually hiring right now? It's, it's literally everybody except for tech. You know, it's healthcare needs software developers. So does, you know, the financial industry. So does, I was telling a friend, like, it's it basically like you might get laid off from Amazon, but then you have working at Procter & Gamble. Maybe that's not the career path you wanted, but these are real jobs. And if you have these skill sets, like the demand out there is still high, there's still being jobs added in spite of the fact there's so many layoffs that are happening. They're just so high profile. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and I think you, you hit the nail on the head, right? Like, you know, it, it's the, the layoffs in tech and, and kind of the, you know, if you want to call it the recession that's happened in tech is, is painful. And right, like, again, it's a big part of our business. We have a lot of friends that work there, have a lot of clients, so it, it hurts. But, you know, it, it, as you said, in the, the grand scheme of things, it's a, it's a pretty small subset. And, you know, and I think like, 
it, it still speaks to something we've talked about a bunch on this. Like the, the labor participation rate is just too low. So, you know what I mean? 3.4% unemployment is not sustainable. You know, like the, the jobs that we're really lacking, you know, it is some of these areas, whether it be, you know, services or, you know, leisure and hospitality, like, you know, where, like, you know, you talk to friends that are in the, you know, that own a restaurant or, you know, work in the restaurant business, they just can't get enough staff to work there. And hopefully that's starting to change because, you know, I mean, those are obviously important areas and kind of, you know, a lot of the lifeblood of our, our country. So it's, it's nice to see like things picking up there and, you know, and, and, and that will be not to go too, nobody wants to hear us talk too much about economics, but like the whole concept of, you know, 70% of our economy is, you know, the consumer, right? So if the consumer is working, that should be what keeps, you know, our country out of recession. So, you know, like that's, yeah. people working is a good thing. <laughs> yeah. If you, I don't know if I, complete side tangent, if I told you like my, my, my latest thing to nerd out on is the Economics Explained channel on YouTube. So probably five videos a week. So yeah, if you're listening, you really want to learn about economics. That's where I'd uh, recommend. Anyways, yeah, understood. <laughs> Anyways, um, last thing I want to touch on is a little bit forward looking, and I, I kind of joke when we started talking here is that I'm glad we waited till we had some January data. Um, and I, I think I promised two shows ago we were finally going to have some like sales numbers that can kind of give us more of a forward looking indicator. It took us a little while to get our new uh, data package kind of set up. But it was finally working for us. Um, I had I did have one stat that I had to triple check like five times. I didn't believe it um, when I was looking at. Um, I, I think the things that are relevant um, to everyone out there. And again, we're talking about our numbers. I realize not everyone's going to care. It's like I don't really know care what Hyrule's doing, but it is a subset. And it's what we have to work on based of what like the industry demand is. People come to recruiting firms like Hire Well to Hire, um, not for every hire, but for the urgent stuff. So the, it is still an indicator of of kind of where things are potentially headed. Um, our new logo clients for Q4 2021, back when things were booming, versus our new logo clients for Q4 2022, just this past quarter when things weren't, identical. We had the exact same number of net new clients between those two quarters, which actually blew my mind. Um, not the case for job orders, though. That's where things dropped off. Um, so from Q4 2021 versus Q4 2022, you know, we like comparing Q4 to Q4 since it's kind of a wonky quarter, about a 40% drop. So I won't lie to you, like things definitely kind of dried up kind of between those two quarters. Um, but you also have to take with a grain of salt, though, because when you go back to the end of 21 into 2022, you know, that Q1 of 2022, the biggest boom quarter, it was only 14% above what the previous that Q4 was. So, you know, you could say the, 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 the peak or the bubble really was not just, you know, last January, February, March, but the kind of the months kind of preceding into that, um, which kind of uh, kind of accounts for that. But. That being said, too, the last things I'll kind of say, getting into like January, what's happening right now, um, our job orders went up 119% from December. They were up 52% from November. They're up 33% from October. Um, that seems like it's declining because like December and November are kind of slow months in general. In general. But October is usually a busy month, right. and we're up 33% from there. Um, it's the highest they were since the previous May. So going all the way back to when things were still hot, we're kind of getting close to those numbers. Not as high as last January. It was about 19% below that. No, we're not all the way back in terms of total demand. But uh, compared to, honestly, what things were looking like, you know, all throughout Q4, like it's a pretty big rebound. And if that continues, I think we're going to mean we hire well, but also the rest of the kind of hiring industry will be in good shape. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. I, I will give you a quick shout out, you know, being our CRO and, and heavy emphasis on, you know, our BD efforts. Like, truthfully, a year ago, driving new business wasn't, you know, a top of our mind because we had so many clients hiring that it was just kind of a matter of, of servicing the ones we had. Clearly, as things started to slow down, we realized we needed to take a little more of a, a proactive approach, um, which has been an exciting thing to see. So that, that's been great. But, you know, I think also for, for context, like, you know, we... While we're not the biggest, you know, our mix of services and skills, like we touch just about every industry, just about every function within a company. So, you know, we recently launched a supply chain practice. Um, you know, obviously we do a lot within tech, but, you know, covering sort of all, you know, all aspects of cross-functional hiring of, of companies, both from the executive level down to, to mid-level hiring. Like we've got a good, you know, we've got a good view of it. I mean, you know, last year across the combined hire well group, you know, we worked with, you know, roughly 500 companies helping hire probably, you know, 3,000 people. Um, so, you know, we've got a, a nice window. Again, we're not, you know, not not the biggest, but I think, you know, the, the stats we see are real. And so we're excited to share and, and, you know, cautiously optimistic that despite what's happening in the world, things are, you know, 
trending on the, in, the, in the right direction. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, we won't uh, take up too much more of your time out there listening to those rattle off stats and statistics and whatnot. We know it's always the most interesting thing, but um, TLDR, things are slowly getting better and I'm happy with where things are trending. Um, can't be boom years all the time, but I think we're going to be in a good space. So yep. um, thanks again for tuning into the Town Insights podcast, part of the Town Insights series, which is always available for replay on towninsights.hirewell.com, as well as YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Amazon. Matt, thanks again, as always. Always a pleasure chatting with you on these. Um, thanks, everyone out there. Sometime in the next two to four months for one of these. <laughs> we talk about, you know, Whenever we finally get back to it again. Yeah, it's a regular schedule we have. Everyone out there, we'll see you soon. <laughs>